It's not lost on me standing here today that many people have stood in this chapel and <coughs> and convinced I'm not worthy. Nonetheless, my short little message, I, I hope that it resonates to you as it has to me. I'm so honored, Daddy O, Mama Doris, to stand here today. But I've been honored every time that we've been asked to come here. I called him in the middle of the night, told him, would he come up here? He said, I have to wash my clothes, but I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> George, you sure? I have asked, and she has said yes. My sister, Linda Oliver, to come and read the scripture for you this morning. The scripture has to do with a woman who was hungry and thirsty. Being of our gathering this weekend. But she was also desperate. Turn in your Bibles, chapter Luke, chapter 8 of Luke, verse 43 through 48. Her affliction 
have gotten worse. So she was desperate. And she made up her mind that if she could go and see Jesus, could just come face to face with him, that she could be healed. But when she got there, the crowd was too large. Interesting part of that scripture. Peter almost rebuked the Lord by saying, Lord, the crowd's too great. Anyone could have touched you. But he knew, didn't he? Power has gone out of me, he said. Mm -hmm. But this is the part that gets me. She couldn't come face to face with him. She couldn't do anything but touch the hem of his robe. And even in touching the hem of his robe, she was healed. Now that's just The devil woke me up this morning at a quarter to five. Where's Brother Keith? He spoke on his right there. It happened to me, and it happened to Steve. He said, happened. Yes. He woke me up, and he told me, I did, did wake up this morning? And he told me, you can't do this. There's no way you can do this. And you know what I told him? Peter said it, get behind me, say <laughs> It's already been settled, see? You lose. And I ask God to give me strength because I'm just a East Tennessee Ridge runner from Sweetwater, Tennessee. <laughs> Have you ever felt desperate? They give a hundred and thirst and you felt this. I want every person here to close their eyes right now and picture yourself in your most desperate moment. Because I want you to remember what it looked like in front of that life. Are you there? Can you see it? Can you feel it? Because what I'm going to ask you to do in a few minutes is to feel desperate for a different Remember that time? Maybe there were many. When I was six years old, I felt desperate for a pair of PF Flyer tennis shoes. <laughs> got those shoes, you could run faster and jump higher. That's what the man on TV said, so I was in. <laughs> and I got out of class that day. My grandparents picked me up. I got in the car with them. I said, we've got to go find PF Flyers. And my granny looked at me and she said, Elmer, we're going to go find PF Flyers. Let's go. When we started in Sweetwater, they had none. We went to Philadelphia, Tennessee, they had none. We went to Loudoun, Tennessee, and by the time we got to Lenore City, we found them on the front street of Lenore City. I put them on, I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to be honest now, the truth of the fact, I wanted the decoder ring that came with the PF Flyers. I'm not sure what we're decoding to this day. But I want you to know, I still have the ring. <laughs> got a secret message inside. <laughs> Later on, there was a car that I had. <clears throat> My dad said, why do you have to have that car? They make cars every day. And I said, no, Dad, I'm desperate for this car. I have to have this car. I got it. And we wondered every single day of that car's life when it started to run the next day. <laughs> and I was desperate. Some years later, a young lady walked into Clement Hall, University of Tennessee. 
I was working the desk because I was an RA at the time. And I knew instantly that my life had changed when I saw her. Now, you can say you don't believe that. You don't believe in love at first sight. I'm going to tell you, I do. And I knew my life had changed. I was so busted when she turned around and looked at me from those she was looking at those mailboxes, trying to find her mailboxes. She turned around and looked at me and said, what are you looking at? <laughs> and I said, I'm, okay, I'm looking at you. <laughs> We've been going to tell the madman. I moved to Nashville and I never saw her for 30 years. And I remember kneeling in church with her when I told her goodbye and drove away from the University of Tennessee. But you know what? While I cried about that, I believe God was crying with me. And 30 years later, when I was broken, He brought her back into my life. Because He gave me the she says she needed it when we needed it most. I thought I was desperate. I've been desperate so many times in my life. I've taken it up with God. God, I'm desperate. I need this job. I need this raise. I need this. I need that, Tim. I need this cup. I need this single. I'm desperate, God. You've seen my laundry list so many times in my life. You got one, right? You lift it up to him. By the way, he forgives different than, than we do. He forgives, it says in Romans, and he forgets. Amen. Amen. How many times I must say, you know, I, Lord, I just got to bring it up to you again. And he probably says, and he'll tell me later, we covered it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> You're being redundant. <laughs> My humanness continues to bring it up in front of me. So you felt desperate. I felt desperate. I hungered and thirst even more. What I'm going to ask you a question to say and do. Have you ever been desperate for Jesus? The feeling of desperation that I just asked you to feel. Have you ever felt that desperation for Him? Think about it, it's different. It's not about what he can do for me. It's about what I can do for him. Just lay on my heart that desperate, hungry, and thirsty is my new prayer. And every day of my life, I want to wake up and say, Lord, I'm just desperate for you. I'm not going to give you any more of my laundry mess. You've heard it all of it. You don't need to hear it again. Looking at Allison sitting, sitting right here. If I live a thousand years, I'll never forget her coming down the side and falling on her face. If I live a thousand years, I'll never forget my brother Tom kneeling at this altar, knowing he was dying, and leaving it all right here. I'm asking you, when you feel desperate, I 
I'm asking you, you don't have to take any longer than this. He already knows. You just need him. And why shouldn't you? Why shouldn't you need him? He came from heaven to earth for us. He was ridiculed. Scourged, which many people died when they were scourged before they ever got to the crucifixion phase. Carried the cross for our sins. Like Steve just said, he was there. We were there. Humiliated. God for you and me. So why shouldn't we be absolutely desperate for him? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, was desperate for you and me. So when the Lord this morning, the devil woke me up this morning and the Lord took over. He took me to the table and he said, write this down. And I did. He said, I want you to do this. This is what you do.
classical music at Bicopa, and if we're here to worship this morning, it would be Tim Minzy singing on my father's side. <coughs> if you will bow your head, I'll say a prayer and Tim will come. Oh God, what a weekend, what a time that we've had in the world. Lord, I truly feel your presence. We can't even comprehend the magnitude of your love for us, but one day we will when we pass that veil and you throw your arms around us. Then we will we will truly know. Lord, I ask that the desperation I have spoken about is laid on every heart that's within the sound of my voice. And we go out and share the word of desperation to our brothers and sisters, that that be our prayer morning, noon, and night. And that a revival from that will start. But it starts with each one of us, Lord. Let us be desperate for you, Almighty God. Now pray in the matchless name above no name above your name, Lord. Our Jesus. Jesus. 